All right. So let's talk about our change in Y compared to our change in X. So does everybody agree that I could put my M on this side and my slope formula on this side? Everybody agree so far? Is that the same? Yes? It's just saying slope equals this while this equals slope. That's all I'm saying. All right. How do I get rid of a denominator? Raise your hand if you can tell me how I get rid of a denominator. Let, let me do one more thing before I do that. Isn't y minus y1 a quantity? That's a number, right? The change in my y's compared to the change in my x's. Well, how could I get rid of that denominator? How do I rationalize the denominator, Brenda? I would multiply it by it. Right? So let's multiply. Both sides, correct? Couldn't I multiply by x minus x1 to get rid of my denominator? And look what I get. y minus y sub 1 equals my slope times x minus x sub 1. That's where it comes from. Point slope comes from slope. See that? I think that's pretty cool. Yeah? The point slope formula comes directly from slope. I forgot to put my quantities around my x's here. Questions on this? All right, let's use it. All right, pencils down. I know that we can use slope-intercept form with this, but let's use something that we know, something we're familiar with, and figure out how to use it with point slope form. So here are my steps. The first thing I need to do is write my skeleton. Here's my skeleton. y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value. Actually, we should put a blank there as well, correct? Because I'm going to find my point and my slope. All right, my second step is to find my point and my slope. What point would you like to use? The y-intercept. The y-intercept would be the easiest one, correct? Yes, it is. So here's my y-intercept. What is my y-intercept? Okay, but how would I write that using an ordered pair? Zero, negative two. How would I find my slope? Raise your hand if you can tell me how I find slope. The most simplistic. One word. That's more than one word. Rise, run. That's not a word. That's three. One word. No. How do I find slope? Don't tell you? Okay. I want to guess. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> You're gonna, what? Counting. Yes. I have to count. So let's count together. How far do we have to ride? One, two, three, four, five. And how far do we have to run? One. Is this a positive slope or a negative slope? It's a positive slope. It's going in the positive direction. I'm driving down X Highway. I get to this intersection and I have to go up. All right. So now that we have our point and our slope, we can now use, say it together with me, folks. Point. 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 That was pathetic. Point. All together now. One, two, three. Point. 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 Thank you. Okay, where my slope is 5, and here's my x value. Where's the x value go? Next to the x. 
Right, the X's go together and the Y's go together. Now I just have to simplify and solve. Let's simplify together. Y, what is the opposite of negative 2? Positive 2. So I have Y plus 2 equals 5 times X is 5X. Do I have to write 5 times 0? Just leave it, right? What do you think my final step is? Y. Why would I subtract 2? We're solving for Y. Putting it into slope intercept form. All right. These go away, and I'm left with y equals 5x minus 2. Let's pretend like we don't know what it looks like. What does 5x minus 2 look like? Philip, can you explain that to me? The y-intercept would be negative 2, so my graph would translate what? Down. Down 2, perfect. And then what? With a slope of 5 over 1. Good. Perfect. Steep or not so steep? Steep. Is that what our graph looks like? Exactly what our graph looks like. Let's unveil our steps. I write a skeleton. I identify points in the slope. Substitute into the skeleton and solve for y. Pretty straightforward, right? Question so far. Pencils down. Now I don't have a graph. Let's do the same step. Michael, what was my first step? Write the skeleton. So I'm going to write y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value. They've already identified the slope and the point for me, so what's my slope? Negative one half. And what's, where does the x go? With the x. And where does the y go? With the y. Let's simplify and solve. y minus 3 equals negative one-half x. We like to leave it like that. It looks like it's in slope form, right? What is a negative times a negative? And what is one-half times two over one? Just one, right? So two cancel? Because two over two is one? All right, I'm going to rewrite this because I'm just going to be nice and thorough. Y minus 3 equals negative 1 half X plus what class? 1. And what's my final step? Add 3 to both sides. Add 3. Add 3. You guys ready to take off on your own? I figured you would be. Y equals negative 1 half X plus... Four. Somebody explain to me in a complete sentence what that looks like. Philip, you did the last one. Somebody else. You pick, Philip. Pick somebody. Frankie. Frankie, explain to me in a complete sentence. Sure you do. I know you have, know how to explain it. You just want to do it perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. What do you know? Tell me what you know and why. That's all I want to know. I want to know what you know and why. Okay. Is that what we normally start with, is our slope? Just tell me what this graph looks like. Okay. So how is that translated? Let's write a... You tell me what to do with... I'm going to draw a line. Do I need to draw a positive line or a negative line? Positive? What do you think, guys? Why? See how the slope's negative? Frankie? So what should I do with this?
They just told me it's not a positive slope. So what do you want me to do with that line? Flip it. Let's flip it over. Or reflect it, right? Was that a reflection? Now it's in the negative direction. Now what would you do with it? Make it more steep or less steep? It's less steep by a half. So kind of like that. What else would we do with it? He says to stop looking at him. Mm -hmm. Up more. Like what? Okay, where's the y-intercept? So translate it. Up four? Does that look kind of look what the graph should look like? Let's check. What was our point that they gave us again? Two, three? One, two, one, two, three? About right there? That looks like it works, right? So it's more than just the process, right? It's about knowing the big picture, what it all means. Right, Johnny? No, you don't have to graph it. Mrs. Muller just wants to tie it all together. Always about the big picture. Okay, why don't you guys try this one? All right, let's pick on somebody. Frankie, you pick somebody. Today. Frankie doesn't want to get his homework done. It's okay. Mario. What's my first step? Really? Because that's why we call it number two? <laughs> First, let's write the skeleton. Y minus my Y value equals my slope times X minus my X value. Now, what do I do, Mario? Negative one is x, perfect. Where's that go? <laughs> perfect. And where does my y go? After the y. Perfect. Okay, what's next? Okay, so we're going to distribute y minus 4 equals, what do you get, Mario? Plus, well, this is the opposite. What is the opposite of a negative? So 4 times positive 1 is 4. Good job. Nice catch. Okay, who's next? Why don't you pick one of the people that are talking while you were talking? That would be a good idea. I know several. Well, Johnny was one of them. Let's start with Johnny. Johnny, what would I do next? Good. Add four. Please go away. And what am I left with, Aaron? Excellent. Y equals 4x plus 8. What does that look like? Frankie, I need you to pick somebody again. Somebody that was talking while Mario was talking. Hint, they're near you. Behind you. <laughs> Thank you for that volunteer. Okay, Eduardo. Let's, I'm, I'm drawing a line. This is my parent graph, right? Okay, how, what changes? You know what? It should have arrows. Shouldn't it have arrows? I think it should too. Okay, now it has arrows. <laughs> 
it makes it more realistic. You're right. Doesn't it help you picture it? Okay, what are we going to do with it? Okay, Eduardo, continue. Okay, so what's going to happen to this parent graph then? It's going to go up or transition. Up eight. What else? What does a slope of four do to a line? It does what? It doesn't, well, I guess technically if you were to count it, but the parent graph, what does a slope of four do as opposed to a slope of a half? It makes it more steep. Right? It makes it exactly how much more steep? Four. That's why there's a four in front of it, right? It makes it four times as steep. Something like that? It's about three and a half. You don't think that's four times? Well, let's just call it four times. All right, let's continue. Let's try this one. You guys try this one. All right, Josh. So what is my first step? That's the first step? Write my skeleton. So I have y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value. So what are those numbers that you're speaking of? I'm sorry? So y would be, specifically, what's that point? Zero. Zero. At the, at the origin, right? And what's my slope? Up to over three, just like that. Is he right? Yeah. Negative. Good catch. It's in the negative direction, right? Yeah. Put it right there in front so we don't miss it. Okay, so where does my slope go? Uh, in front of the x. Negative two over three. And this is my x value. Where's that go? Aaron, and where does my y go? After the y. You still confused? Do I need to write y mi minus zero? I can just write y, correct? Equals negative two thirds x. Do I need to write two thirds times zero? No. No, if it's just zero, there's my answer. Y equals negative two thirds x means that it's in the negative direction. Let's do a parent graph. Make sure it has arrows this time. So it would be right through the middle right there, right? And then it is reflected because it's negative. And then it doesn't move up or down. It doesn't shift or translate up or down, right? There is no y. And then we just have to make it Less deep. So, so the any, point. any point on this line would work. Good question. Isn't zero zero the easiest one though? Right? Okay. I didn't make Did you get the same answer? Yes. Good job. All right. Try this one. All right, let's go quicker on this one. How about Michaela? Michaela, what am I going to write first? Okay, so first I'm going to write the skeleton. Y minus my Y value equals X times X minus my X value. How about Selena? What am I going to fill in with the skeleton? What do I have here? What did you find? What point did you use? Zero, zero. And what slope did you come up with? One over one, which is one. Is it positive one or negative one? Good. How about Carlos? What did you do next? With what? 
Perfect. So you put your y value in first. Awesome. Then what? Equals one. Good job. How about Gilbert? What would be my next line? I'm sorry? Distribute. Perfect. So does anything go, what, what do I get on the left side? Y equals X. Do I need to write minus zero? What is that? What is this right here? What is it specifically, guys? It's the parent graph. Exactly. That is the parent graph, right? Doesn't it look like it? Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. Good job. All right, pencils down. So this one says the only difference is it just tells me a horizontal line. Not too much different. What is the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. So don't I still have a point and a slope? So I just need to write my skeleton y minus my y value equals slope times x minus my x value. How about Alex? Alex, what would I put for my slope? Perfect. There's my slope right there. Michael, what would I put for my x value? That's my x value? What? The 2. Perfect. The 2 is my x value. And how about Brandon? Brandon, what would I put for my y value? Negative 3. How about Christopher Macias? What would I do next? Oh, Christopher's not here. Andrew. Other Andrew. I'm sorry. Arpita. What's the next thing I do? We'll look at this. Let's look at our steps. We wrote our skeleton. We identified a point and a slope. We substituted into the skeleton. What's the last thing we do? So how would you solve this for y? What do you see here? Okay. Tell me what you write. What does this mean right here? Good. Let's make it a positive. So I just get y plus 3 equals You said distribute, right? Distribute, what happens? What's that? Zero. Do we need to write zero? What happens here? Zero. So I've got nothing over here. What's my last step? Who can help him? Jesse? We'll go back to Maria. Maria, what do I do now? Add three, subtract three from both sides. All right, that's the only thing left to do is to solve for y. And we get y equals negative three. What's that look on a graph? Down negative three. So here's my line, here's my parent graph, and you said down three, one, two, three, about right there, and then what? Make it a straight line, a horizontal line. Perfect. Is that horizontal? Is it close enough? Excellent. You guys try this one. All right, let's get started with this last one. How about Eric? Eric, what's my first step? Write the skeleton. Good job. Let's see, who have I not? How about Andrea? Then what? Okay, so what did you put for a point? Zero, negative two, that's what I would have used also. And what did you use for your slope? Zero. Excellent. How about Christian? Christian, what do I do next? 
Okay, let's substitute in. So what goes here? Excellent. And here? And here? Zero. How about the less? What would the next line look like? Good. Zero. We don't need an either one of these zeros, right? Okay, what's my final step? How about Mario? Oh, I'm going to change my color here. Subtract two from both sides. And you get y equals negative two. It's exactly what it looks like, correct? All right. Good job. All right. No shuffling. Freeze. What did you learn today? Point slope form. Good, Klyja. No, I said to freeze. This is not the time to start putting your stuff away. What, it, what is needed to write an equation in point slope form? Klyja, pick somebody. Quickly. A point and a slope. The person next to you is absent. How would you explain where point slope form comes from? Johnny, pick somebody. Levi, where does it come from? Where does point slope form come from? Not exactly. Where did it come from? Where did it derive? How did, we, did it just appear? We said, oh, look at, there's this really cool thing that's called point slope form. Let's use it. Where did it come from? You have a whole bunch of people whispering it to you. <laughs> so let's help them out. It came from slope, right? It came from the slope formula. Okay, on your assignment sheet, I want you to go ahead and fill this out. This form is called point slope form because. Good job. 